Good morning, Nigerians, beautiful people out there, our teeming and ever-increasing viewers. It is your program this morning on ITV, independent television, certainly the best. And you know one thing about ITV, we always want to continue to extend the frontier and raise the bar of discourse in order to satisfy the yearning desire of our team and ever-growing viewers for quality, educative, entertaining, and enlightening program. At top of this, we have decided to raise the banner with a rider, nationalism and you. Nationalism and you, what does it entail? What is the implication? It is a new thing for you and for me. During the scrambling for the independence of Africa from our colonial master, nationalism meant let the European, the Spanish, the France, the colonial masters, let them go away. We want to do it by ourselves, self-determination. And we have beautiful names like Dr. Nandi Azikwe, Amadu Belo, Chifo Bafemi Awolowo, Tafawa Balewa, and we have Herbert Macaulay as the front runner of that nationalist movement for Nigeria. There were nationalist movements all over Africa. Today, the changing face of nationalism is that a, of a clarion call for us individual Nigerians to build our nation. That is the new spirit of nationalism. That is all that nationalism and you is all about. It is about you. It is about me doing the right thing, acting well, behaving well, in order to reconstruct our nation, to create that country of our collective dreams, aspirations, and goals. You are welcome to nationalism and you. And this morning, we are going to be examining issue of national importance. We are going to be discussing the topic, reinventing national integrity in order to achieve peace and national security. And we have a very viable guest in the house to discuss this with me this morning. He was a member of the Peace Committee established preparatory to 2015 election because he was at that point in time the chairman of Inter-Party Advisory Council. That committee is still subsisting to Tule, headed by General Abdul Salami Abu Bakr, the Committee of Peace. So this morning he will be examining the topic with me, reinventing national integrity to achieve peace, political stability, and security. Dr. Tanko Yinusa, nationalism and you. It is my duty and responsibility to build my nation. Thank you. You have sent message out there. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> I hope you are putting your own hand on your chest to respond the way he has responded. It is your duty, my duty, to build our country. No one will do it for us. The era of pointing accusing fingers should be over. We are the builder of a nation. And as you lay your mat, so you lie on it. It is ours. 
Dr. Tanko Yinusa. Thank you for having me this morning. Good so morning, much Nigerians. agitations, so much troubles, so much concern mm. regarding <clears throat> peace and security in our country. That's right. How did we arrive here? Oh, well, um, just like us in your intro, what really is it a nationalist? What makes you even a nationalist? A nationalist is somebody who believes in his country, his ideals and his sovereignty, and is ready to protect that particular sovereignty in his good and his bad times. He protects it at the, against the interests of any other nation. That makes you a nationalist. Of course, it may dovetail into three different tiers. There are those ones who are national conservative in their nationalistic thinking. There are those who are liberal in their thinking of nationalism. And there are those who are left-wing. Sometimes some people call them socialists in terms of their nationalistic thinking. But all in all, it is about what you feel and how you feel and how serious you are to protect the interest and the integrity of your nation. But of course, there's a caveat also to it. Also, it is expected also that the nation in which you stand for, you want to protect, you want to do everything to promote, must also stand for you, to protect you, to guide you, and ensure that you are in good living condition so that you can reciprocate in that regard of protecting the interests of, another, of your own nation. Be as it me. The question is, how do we even get there here? Remember way back in those days, the Nigerian nation, a beautiful bride, a beautiful nation, where the interest of the people was paramount in the eyes of our, our, our leaders. In fact, at a point in time when we discover oil, we had so much money that even the head of state at that, that time was saying that the problem we had at that time was not even looking for money, but how to spend the how money. How to spend it. And then we were giving consensus and even pensions and money to people. So the people become so much concerned about their country. They were dedicated because the country feels so much about them. But at a point in time, we now lose that guard. Subsequent leaders became so greedy and self-serving, mutually interested in themselves alone, they now treat the people with disdain, with deceit, deceiving, with decadence of immeasurable content. And that has created a big problem that we are trying to solve at the moment. That is where we miss it, because we left that particular jurisdiction where our strength was within the people. So, what do you think we can do to reinvent national integrity? National integrity in this context means that we have a nation where each and every one of us believe in the country. It was an American leader that said, do not think of what your country can do for you. Think of what you can do for your country. Exactly. Yes, you, you, you threw up a caveat, and I believe in the caveat. Why this program is nationalism and you is that. If you are a teacher, you should teach very well in such a way that you create students, pupils, and graduates that are system builders, nation builders and things of that nature. If you are at the stage of lecturer university, our university should be cultured in such a way that we produce, uh, what do you call it, system builders, nation builders. If you are opportune to be in politics, in leadership, you serve the people in such a way that the people will have a concurrent confidence between the government and the governments in such a way that we can say, yes, we believe in our nation and therefore we are part, an integral part of nation building. So how, in your own ways, do we reinvent that confidence, that national integrity that we make other people to say, yes, this nation is worth that? When you reinvent you've already agreed that there was a system failure. 
Now to reinvent means that you are going back to the basis. Now, having identified some of the problem, present leaders, the time is not too late. Present leader and subsequent leaders need to start thinking backwards. How were they in those days? How were they being taken care of in those days? What made them so comfortable and believing in the nation as at that time? A simple example is this. I used to, I grew up in Lagos, very close to the uh, University Teaching Hospital, Luth. The university students as at that time where you see them relative age, they are not too young, but too old, but they were young men. And in fact, when they are going to classes, you see them before they go to classes, they go to a place where they will eat, they call it cafeteria. I don't know whether that word still exists anymore in our <laughs> schools now anyway. Yeah. The cafeteria is where people go in to eat and they are being given uh, a, a voucher and the voucher would dictate yes, yes. what you want to eat and all of those ones. You go and pick your spoons and all. When you see the dishes being served to these young men, nationalists inclined, money coming from the post government post supporting the educational system, you see very big chicken, beef, all kind of things. Children pick what they want to eat. They were fed comfortably. Some of them are even paid scholarship. But as of today, the students that we have are paying unbelievable tuition fee. As of recently, in Kaduna, we have been asked now to pay 150,000 naira for the child of the poor to be able to go to school. No scholarship. You are still reducing it to the belief of the parent who is probably not even a teacher, but a bricklayer on the street trying to fend for the family. How do you think those ends can meet? So our leaders need to go back to the drawing board. Look into the areas of agriculture where bedrimlingly of the Nigerian people are involved in. Move away from the sustain, uh, sustain, sustain, uh, subsistence farming. Go into mechanized farming to empower the people to have a livelihood for themselves. I believe that every local government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 774 local government of Nigeria, every local government has a way in which they can make their economic viability. In my local government in Kano, for example, we produce rice. Imagine if local government in Kano having a mechanized industry that produces rice Take a look at the byproduct and all people benefit and they are built, they are producing and they are buying and selling. Once they take care of their own income, they add value to the society, they add, they pay their taxes and help the economy of the country grow. They cannot take care of their education of their children. Even if government is laying its hands off from financing and taking care of the educational system, these people can take care of it. But meanwhile, it becomes very important and expedient for our government to invest in education and make the people feel that they are together. And that brings us back to the issue of local government autonomy. The local government must be independent of the states because the states have got the local government so the people are not feeling the impact of the local governments. So once you can provide opportunity for the local government to thrive, the people can communicate with their leaders from the grassroots. It will reduce tension. It will reduce the issue of insecurity. It will build the localities because the local government is saddled with the responsibility of building, paying school fees and um, teacher school fees, uh, street lights, street roads, in, um, uh, what do you call it, hospitals, and direct security because within those particular local governments, there are the traditional leaders who are well endowed. So these are the bases in which we need to go back to, to start reinventing the wheel, to build integrity and to build trust. I am tempted to, to, be, to believe in your last statement that if the investment in the local government level, uh, what do you call it, the allocations from the federal government that ought to be going to the local government directly goes to them, it will impact positively 
on that level of governance which is closer to the people. And uh, uh, now, a, a quick one. One of the things I also deduced from your commentary is that we should behave responsibly when we are in political leadership. Exactly. And serve meritoriously with the love of our people in mind. I remember that, uh, what do you call it? That Nigerian musician, the mandator, say, love your country, yeah. the people and the nation. That yeah. is nationalism exactly. and you. Because if you governs with such passionate love that radiates and translate into quality of life, dignified life to the citizens. It will enhance the people's confidence in the country and make them to say, we can be a stickler for our countries and that Now, quick one. Are we a victim of unguided population as a nation? No. In fact, our population is supposed to be our strength. Remember, we are not even close to the landmass and the population of China. Now, let me repeat the question again. Yes. I am not saying that our population is too much. Mm. At least, uh, indeed, I will want the population to keep growing mm. because I know we can sustain it. I am saying, are we a victim of unguided population? Well, yes. Probably only with regard to the issue of guiding the population to a productive use. Yes, we are. Because the truth about it is that we are a virgin market. Because of our population and our people, they are there for the taking. The moment in which you give Nigerians good electricity, you provide pipe bomb waters, you provide infrastructure, you provide the basic network of roads, and you provide you know, rail services that can connect from point A to point B. And then you see people, leaders, serving with integrity. And when you say integrity, it made me remember Hassan Usman Kazana. <laughs> there was a post I read. Hassan Usman Kazana was, um, of course, the uh, um, uh, governor as at that time in Kaduna State. So he wrote, they were asking him a question. What is the difference between this present kind of leaders that we have and the then back leaders? He now said, let him tell you a story. And he said, the story is this. When I was the governor, what happened was that there was a land allocation that was supposed to go to the people. And so it was in the GRA, so it's a choosy area. And when they gave it to the, the surveyor and all, then they called the, uh, Abu Bakr or so, everybody was applying. He too applied. And everybody was given. But he was, one, he was surprised when the list of allotees was coming, he did not see his name. So instead of asking questions, he kept quiet. The institution now, leader in show, which is Abu Bakr himself, came to him and said, Your Excellency, I came with your paper. I, when I saw application, I saw your own application too. And when I saw it, I kept it aside. So I came with it to show you that you applied. But I think it is wrong for you to apply. Mm. Because you're supposed to look for the in, look out for the interests of your people to ensure that all of them have gotten a leader take care of the interests of the people, then as against his own. Mm. So I'm here so that you will not hear rumor. Mm. I hear tear your own application right in front of you, so that you know that it was I who tear it and did not give you allocation. I wish you well, sir. Oh, beautiful. And that. And that... That is very instructional. It's yes, talked. it resonates. Yes. When you see that, and he said he never sat him, and then he kept quiet, he said, he said, thank you, and then he left. These are the kind of leaders that were built in those particular days. So now today, when you talk about issue of our population, our, some of our leaders use it against even the people instead of using it for the benefit of You know, I, I quickly remember as you were talking about uh, Hazan, Kasina. Uh, I also heard a story of uh, General Moritala Mohammed went to him and said, Leader, I want to introduce a reform. And, uh, and he said, you want to re uh, introduce a reform? First of all, go and purge yourself of everything you think you acquire undeservedly. And Moritala did that and that kind of a thing. 
these are the kind of things we should be emulating as uh, people, a nation builder, people that have devotion and what do you call it, uh, love for, for the, the country. And uh, so that our words will always be enough for all of us, but it will never be enough for our greed. So those are the issues. Now, reinventing the national integrity. Our youths, you were a member of the Peace Committee. Our That's youth has gone ultra virus against us. They are protesting, sometimes in an unruly manner. But can we blame them? Can we blame them? No, we cannot. What do we do to we need regenerate the confidence of those youth? What we need them? to do is involve them, not distance ourselves from them. Look, at a point in time in this country, I can authoritatively tell you, a child that is born 20 to 25 or 30 years ago does not know some of these stories that we are saying. He had lived a life of a struggle. Since he got out of school, he hardly had a good job that he's going to do. Before he gets that job, he was meant to believe that he has to go through one particular person who knows another person who will give him a note to another person before he can get a job. Or his parents have to pay enormous money. You'll be amazed to know that today, Ebenezer, they are buying job employment at 1 million, 2 million, 12 million, I was and going 10 million. to talk about that. So, how does this... How do we get to this level? We, somebody going to university, where he was hearing stories of how his forefathers were enjoying in the university, he went into the university drinking gari <laughs> and chopping granite, hiding tubers of yam into, under his bed so that to look as if he's comfortable, so that his girlfriends and all will not know that he's suffering. He went through all that emotional torture. After coming out of the university, for him to get a job, he hardly can get one. He's still struggling. He knows that even if he put pen to paper, he cannot get an employment. Even in his school, because for him to pass exam, is he has to settle his lecturers to get by. Or if she's a female, she has to go through a lot of intimidation of semi-prostitution to get to this particular level. So these are things that they've gone through yeah. and that had created a lot of biasness in their mind. So they came out with that. After coming out with that, now they have reinvented their own way of survival in the music industry. I will authoritatively say they reinvented their way of survival. It was not done by any government or anybody. They got through to music. They got through to uh, music and drama and Nollywood uh, and, and all. They got into the idea of going into high tech to make for their own. And apart, apart from all of this, having get to this level, they now understand that there is a stark note of money being given to some high-profile individual where a senator or a federal house of representative is cutting away with 15 to 30 million naira where their parents cannot be able to take care of their own intakes just struggling for 30,000 naira. Why wouldn't they be angry? They are obnoxiously angry. And I think our young men have been ridiculously patient with our leaders. But today, right as you said, that some of the agitation is done wrongly. We that we have, we still have our neck, our head on our neck, should get more closer to our youth. Get them involved into a democratic setting. That was why I asked you that question. Mm. Are we a victim of unguided population? Yes. You know, unguided population in this term mm. means that it's just like, you know, fa family is the unit of a society and a country. Yes. If you do not train your children well, if you do not train your children well, they will grow up to be a problem and a liability. Exactly. To you. Exactly. So, in order to guide populations, you must ensure that you own and customize your own, what do you call it, school curriculum. Mm -hmm. The school 
curriculum is essentially to be tailored towards developmental necessities and goals mm. of the nation. Mm. And you galvanize your youth to believe in it. You know, Chief Obafemi Awolo said something that was very instructive. Mm. He said, the children of the known elite that mm. you fail to educate exactly. will become Come. a problem mm -hmm. to your own children of the elite that you think you have uh, disparately uh, uh, really educated mm. and things of that nature. Mm. And he further said, any wealth that is acquired at the expense of the people we create a society and a country where one person is eating another, we need to exit this. This is the necessity for the national integrity. What do we do? You know, let me revise to a story. In the North, when we grow up then, there's a way in which when we come to our married life, your parents, when you are growing up... Quickly, because our time is going. Okay. Yes, yes. When we are going, what they do is that they will marry for you. Okay. They take care of the house. In the house of land, what you are going to marry, you just put up a lot of box and things to the to the bride but you have a house it is your parent that will take care of you does the house and then they will build it and furnish it you don't go through stress as a young person it creates bonds between the family it creates bonds between the family and the parents now today it is the boy that struggle to do those things that his parents used to do you can see the disparity so now what we need to do is to really make sure that both parents and the child are well tutored in their religious ways because it's a foundation. Reinventions of national norms, in norms values, and cultures, and culture. And, very well. All of these things must be embedded in the Your training. last word to the nation. Nigeria is a country that all of us love, no matter how the pretense, but we want it to work. And we can only make it to work when we come collectively to challenge those who have put us in the perpetual poverty. And nationalism and you. It's my duty and responsibility to build my country. Thank you very much. And we hope we will, you will avail us your time again when we call upon you. At Dr. Time. Tanko, quintessential Dr. Tanko Yunusa. Thank you so much for having me. God bless Nigeria. Do not go away. We are still here on nationalism and you. We are going to discuss another interesting topic and no other person than Dr. Emeka Okegu is waiting for that incisive topic. Stay tuned.